So we'll look at an, an emerging field of uh, computer science, uh, and in particular software engineering, called quantum software engineering. So the quantum bit, of course, has its root in quantum mechanics. So people in physics, they found out that small particles have a very particular type of behavior, which is very different from the bigger phenomena we see around us following the Newton Newtonian uh, physics that led to um, very interesting discoveries in, um, in physics in the past century. But very soon people found out that they can also uh, come up with new notions of algorithm that, uh, that, that build upon those type of phenomena uh, and, and uh, come up with efficient algorithms that use those quantum phenomena and, and uh, calculate things more efficiently. In particular, in uh, quantum mechanics, we have two uh, very specific phenomena. One is called superposition, which means that a quantum uh, particle, a photon or an electron or any, any type of uh, quantum particle, can be uh, in two positions. And once you uh, measure it, uh, it will uh, fall upon one of the two bases that you have measured with a certain amplitude, uh, which, is, um, which can be represented by a prob probability. Uh, and the other phenomenon is uh, entanglement, which means that two particles, uh, are states of, of two particles form um, one system, basically. And uh, once you measure one of them, the other one will also fall um, um, in, in, um, in uh, no matter how far the other one is, it will uh, fall um, in, in the, the basis of the measurement. And these two phenomena can be exploited to come up with new notions of algorithm, which very much resemble a probabilistic algorithm. So you may recall that Turing came up with a fundamental model of computation, which is called Turing machine, that represents the notion of algorithm. On top of that, people have come up with probabilistic algorithms. Quantum algorithms is a layer of abstraction upon that uh, notion of a probabilistic algorithm that uses these quantum phenomena, such as superposition and entanglement, to calculate things efficiently. So that's the, the background to uh, quantum computing. In early days of quantum computing, people came up with theoretical results showing that there are certain quantum algorithms that have theoretical advantage over their classical counterparts. Uh, a phenomenal example is uh, Peter Shor's uh, algorithm for factorizing uh, into prime numbers. The quantum version he came up with, which is a very sophisticated, very genius idea, has theoretical advantage over its uh, classical counterpart. Then there are other algorithms that do things like search and, um, and determining whether a function is balanced or not. Uh, and, and those algorithms have polynomial advantage over the classical counterpart. So there is a proven theoretical advan quantum advantage. However, in order to realize that, you need uh, reliable quantum computers uh, with large number of qubits to, to calculate. Um, and this is not yet uh, in, our, uh, in our disposal. So uh, we are left with uh, devices that are somewhat noisy. The noise is improving. Uh, with limited number of qubits, again, the number of qubits are increasing, and we are waiting for uh, more and more qubits to be accessible in order to benefit from uh, the theoretical uh, quantum advantage that has been shown many decades ago. The noise side of it, is, does that mean just that it's not always perfect, the, res the results that you get? Is it something you have to do, sort of filter out? Is that a bit like... Right. I mean, th there are many different sources of noise in, 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 in quantum computing, uh, including, for example, when you put two uh, particles in entanglement, then entanglement might be lost after some time, or you may inadvertently uh, entangle uh, your particle with something outside your system. And, and all those will influence your computation, so the computation will not give the results you expect. Uh, but anyway, uh, so, so we don't have access to that number of qubits, that number of reliable qubits yet, to, to realize the theoretical advantage. So what we are left with is to use what we have in our disposal in combination with classical uh, computers to realize some sort of pract practical advantage. And that's an ongoing quest. Uh, I expect for many years, possibly many decades to come, we will uh, see quantum computing side by side with classical computing. So quantum computing is not going to replace classical computing uh, in, in the foreseeable future and probably forever. Uh, so what uh, we will be doing is to devise uh, quantum algorithms that will work side by side with classical algorithms to prove some sort of practical advantage. Both will grow in complexity and both for, call for uh, more sophisticated engineering techniques. If you look at the current uh, state of the 
art and the state of practice in, in coming up with quantum algorithms, we very much work like the early days of, uh, of digital computers. So if you were to design an algorithm for, say, multiplication or exponentiation, you would start with gates such as AND, OR, and draw a table, a truth table, and then turn that into a circuit. This is very much like how we design quantum algorithms. So this is uh, one of the ca canonical examples of, of quantum algorithms called quantum Fourier transform. And if you look at it, how it's being designed, the boxes here are uh, the basic quantum gates. So we have something called the Hadamard gate. There are rotation gates. These are basic quantum gates that you uh, use to design a quantum circuit. Uh, so quantum programs are very often called circuits. And the lines are, are the qubits that are connected to them. Here, for example, you have Hadamard gate. This is a controlled rotation gate. So it has two inputs uh, rather than one, and so on and so forth. So in practice, if you were to program this, you could write a Python program, for example, that generates this uh, circuit for you. And, and of course, we are gradually developing more sophisticated libraries that would uh, build layers of abstraction on top of it. But at the moment, we are, uh, we are working at this very, very verbose uh, description of, of quantum algorithms. What we need is, of course, more abstract uh, program uh, constructs that allow us to specify these type of algorithms and more sophisticated algorithms that we are, uh, we are about to design, we are going to design in the future using a higher level of abstraction. So that's one of the challenges of engineering fu future uh, quantum systems. Of course, then we will have to uh, have a rigorous regime of quality assurance around that. So testing those uh, algorithms, particularly in combination and in integration with, with classical systems, is a big challenge. Uh, one of the issues is the current uh, level of noise, so we need to filter out that noise when we are quality assuring our, our, uh, our algorithms and, and make sure that with a, a certain noise model the algorithm is working correctly. But there are, there are other issues. Uh, because these systems are probabilistic in nature, we need to, to measure them a, a number of times if we are dealing with a black box to know uh, the state of the system and how to know about the state of the system without an exponential number of measurements is an ongoing quest, uh, both for physicists but also for computer scientists. Then having uh, methods that can judge about these systems in a compositional manner, coming up with judgments about the system in a holistic manner is, is, is another challenge. And one of the biggest challenges that we have is to make all of this comprehensible to programmers. So uh, we need to train people who can understand quantum algorithms and, and uh, comprehend uh, their, their complexity, which is a, a different layer of complexity than, than we are used to when we deal with classical algorithms. So all of these challenges are open for the future. And one, one question I have, so obviously we mentioned Shaw's algorithm and some of the other kind of theoretical algorithms. Are we sure this isn't a solution looking for a problem, quantum? I mean... So at the moment, uh, many of the algorithms uh, that have been historically proposed do not have uh, a, an established practical application, so we are, we are looking for those applications. But uh, another uh, development in the field is that we are very much looking into this integration of quantum and classical and, and searching for practical quantum advantage into that. So one example of algorithms that are being typically used, this is not my own picture, is a, a class of algorithms called variational quantum algorithms. And they typically have a small quantum core that does some sort of sampling of, of your state space in combination with a classical uh, optimization component they try to optimize your solution. And this has applications, potential applications in material discovery, in drug discovery, in simulating physical phenomena and, and finding about ground energy level, for example, in physics, but also in, in other type of optimization problems, potentially in transport, in other types of applications. We are still exploring whether this offers a, a real practical advantage or not, but uh, at least in areas such as physics, simulating physical phenomena, chemistry, they seem to, to, to provide some potential uh, quantum advantage. I've heard people say before that maybe quantum will be like a, a, a card in your computer, a bit like a GPU. Is that how you see this going? Well, as I said, uh, for the foreseeable future, we do expect quantum computers to be integrated with, with classical computers in a, in a bigger system. The components that we currently have, so I showed you quantum Fourier transform. Quantum Fourier transform itself is inverse many of the variance quantum phase estimation. They are basic building blocks of many of the bigger systems that we are building um, using quantum technology. So yes, we, we are going to see these systems side by side and integrated with classical systems. Unfortunately, the current uh, state of practice in terms of quantum computers is uh, not uh, 
allowing us to build them as, as small cars that will uh, feed into computers. Many of them have to have cooling devices, so, so uh, they're they working in, in very low temperatures, so for that you need uh, big uh, fridges. Um, uh, so the, 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 we are not yet there in terms of uh, physical realization, but that's not exactly my expertise area um, so that I can uh, comment on. No worries. No, it will be a while before we have our quantum smartphones. Then, right? Yeah, it will take a while. Uh, although there are, there are lots of developments in that area, as, as far as I know, we are getting closer to room temperature quantum computers. They are getting a bit smaller. Uh, with very uh, sharp increase in the number of uh, qubits, so there, there are very interesting phenomena. Uh, there are very interesting developments to follow up on uh, in that area as well. Are you finding that you're using classical computing to simulate quantum computing for your development? Uh, so, uh, in in developing engineering software engineering techniques for for uh, quantum software. We are very much using uh, simulators very often to, to, to check the, uh, the applicability and, and effectiveness of our algorithm. But eventually we also sometimes go back and test them on actual quantum computers because this uh, issue of noise is a real issue. We do have simulators that, that have noise models in them, so we could simulate uh, noise on, on a simulator and, and use uh, those type of simulators to evaluate our, our, our algorithm. But the actual uh, proof of the pudding is to run it on an actual computer. Uh, one additional point that I would like to make as, as a kind of a closing remark is that so far I've been talking about engineering quantum systems, software engineering for, for quantum systems. But uh, I do see a potential future for using quantum algorithms to uh, improve engineering of classical systems. That's uh, again an emerging area where we are looking at using quantum algorithms, for example, for more effective test case generation in quantum systems. And there are already a few papers uh, showing some sort of quantum advantage in that area as well. What you have is a superposition of waves on that string. This string can be in a range of different types, variety of different types of modes of oscillation, ways of vibrating. And when you pluck that, you're not just exciting one wave, you're exciting...